I tried so many clubs this year, well over a hundred clubs in fact, from all sorts of manufacturers, from incredibly cheap direct-to-consumer clubs to the big name brands you'll find in any golf shop, to exorbitantly expensive boutique brands you've probably never even heard of. Today I'm going to recap for you my favorite golf clubs of the year. We're talking drivers, irons, wedges, and putters. And specifically with drivers and irons on this video, I'm going to narrow it down to three categories high handicappers, mid handicappers, and low handicappers. Now I don't think there's another channel on YouTube that unearths the hidden gems like we do here on Let's Play Through. So if you're not already subscribed, highly recommend you go ahead and do that. And while you're at it, enter our contest. I'm giving away a complete set of golf clubs from Sticks. If you haven't already entered, I've got a link down there below. You could just have a very nice holiday present for you or someone in your life. All right, let's start off with everyone's favorite club to lust over, the drivers. Now this year in 2023, there were so many great options that came out on the market and a few brands that only release every once in a while also released in 2023. So we had an incredible array of drivers from all sorts of manufacturers. Brands like Ping, Srixong, even Yonex came out with new drivers in 2023. It was a pretty special year. So first, diving into my favorite game improvement driver of the year. This is aimed at you higher handicap, someone that needs a lot of forgiveness. I'm gonna go ahead and say the Ping G430 is the driver for me in this category. Now, Ping's previous drivers like the G400 were known for high MOI, which means you're gonna have a very, very forgiving ball flight, and hopefully you're not gonna miss fairways right and left as much as you would with another driver. But this year in 2023 with the G430, I thought Ping really nailed the distance category as well, and it was one of the longest drivers I tested in 2023. So just a remarkable release that really combines the two things that golfers most want, forgiveness and distance. Now the best driver that I tried for you mid handicappers is the Gen 6 0311 from PXG. It's a highly customizable driver where they can move weight all around. They've got a number of shaft options. If you go through a PXG fitting, you're gonna have a really good opportunity to dial something in and that's gonna help you lower your scores. And for you mid handicappers, even get down into single digits. I think it's great bang for the buck especially if you wait probably till March or April next year, you'll be able to find this thing on a discount. That's just PXG's release schedule. They'll roll out the Gen 7s in the summer and in the spring, they're gonna discount what we've got here with the Gen 6. I might hold out for the spring, but in any case, this was a really fantastic driver for you mid handicappers out there. In addition to all its customizability, it's got dashing good looks, nice sleek, stealthy look to it. It's got a beautiful matte black finish on top, which I really like because that cuts down on glare. I think it's a really great all around driver. I was actually more consistent in terms of left right dispersion with this driver than my previous gamer, which is going to be next on our list, but I ended up putting the Gen 6 in my bag this year. It's that good. Now we get into the best option for the players out there, your low handicappers. And for me, it's going to be the Titleist TSR series. I personally think the TSR3 was the best of the bunch, especially when I paired it with a counterbalanced hazardous shaft. I thought it was the perfect combination. Great piercing trajectory out of this driver. The sound, the feel, the looks, everything about it is solid. I found the dispersion to be excellent with this driver and it was the longest driver I tried this year. So if you're all about the distance, I think the TSR is the one. In general, a great driver that you can work left and right, which a player is going to want to do. Shape his shots out there on the golf course, depending on the look of the hole. It's really the entire package. And for me, it's the driver of the year overall. All right, next section here is going to be irons. Again, we're going to start off here with the best high handicapper or game improvement irons. There are so many good ones this year. I would put Callaway Paradigm up there, the Stealth 2 up there. Even the Ping G430 irons were excellent. All of those irons extremely forgiving, extremely long. Now they're gonna have pressed lofts, of course. They're gonna give you a little extra help, but that didn't hurt too badly when it came to spin and stopping power. These things also hold green, so those three excellent choices, but there is one iron that stood head and shoulders above the rest for me. It's also just an incredible value 
where I think high handicappers probably should be shopping, shouldn't be spending a ton of money if you can avoid it, try to get something that's your best bang for the buck. For me, that is going to be the Wilson Dynapower. Now, a lot of people love the Dynapower driver this year. I was not one of those people. I thought it was fair, it was good, it just wasn't towards the top of the list for me. But the irons were a different story. I think, bar none, they were the best feeling for a cast club that has a big cavity and some offset to it. They still felt very close to a forged feel. And if you want that forged feel, by the way, the de-forged irons from Wilson Staff are really great contenders as well. But these felt really great. Now, in terms of height, they were absolutely incredible, getting up high in the air, stopping really nicely on greens, even with its pressed loft. And let me tell you, these are right up there with the longest game improvement irons I've ever tried. The Dynapower with those pressed lofts goes a mile, but like I said, still stops really well on greens. Forgiveness wise, I think they're the most forgiving irons I tried in 2023 as well. Again, full package, Wilson Dynapower does it for me for the high handicappers. Let's talk next about best mid handicap iron. This is again where you're probably trying to pair a really great club with decent value. Again, some solid contenders in this category. First off, we'll talk about the Titleist T200 which is leaps and bounds above the previous model of that club. Just fantastic. You've also got direct-to-consumer brands like Tacomo that are just offering incredible value. You can get a set of clubs for $500 or even less with Tacomo, and they're just as good, if not better, than a lot of the big names out there. But for me, the best golf clubs I tried in 2023 for the mid-handicap range is going to be the tailor-made P790s. This is the new 2023-2024 edition. They came out just a couple of months ago. I had a chance to test these in the PGA Tour Superstore. They were absolutely beautiful. Not only beautiful in terms of good looks, which these are probably the best looking mid-handicap irons out there. They're the OGs when it comes to a hollow body foam filled construction that looks like a blade. They were the first to ever do it. And this new updated P790 for 2024 is absolutely incredible. It is the straightest. I think it's the most consistent. The original P790 did struggle a little bit with consistency. Sometimes you just get one that kind of blasts it off the club face. I found these irons to have an incredibly tight dispersion, both in terms of direction and in terms of distance. So a very, very consistent club. It's going to be a great stepping stone if you're trying to move down into a lower handicap, maybe break single digits for the first time. These are clubs that can absolutely get you there. Again, they've got workability, even alongside some really fantastic forgiveness. I'm a person, my miss oftentimes is a little thin. The shots of the new P790s did not lose much distance. The P790 series just continues to get better and better. The unfortunate thing is they continue to get more expensive and more expensive. But I do think they are the best clubs that I tried this year for mid handicappers. Now the best player irons are the ones that I have put in my bag this year. It's a brand you may or may not have heard of before, but it is called Adele. It's a company out of Colorado very boutique brand. These clubs are not cheap, but they are worth every penny. The first time I took them out of the box and took a swing here in my simulator, the words out of my mouth were, holy sh These things were the best feeling golf clubs I've played in my entire almost 40 years playing golf here on planet Earth. They're that good. They say nothing feels like a Mizuno. Well, I'll tell you, this feels better than a Mizuno. It not only has that buttery, nice feel you get from a forged club, but it also has just a punch to it. It's a solid feeling. It's hard to explain until you hit the sweet spot on an Adele, you'll know what I'm talking about. And if you look carefully here at the SMS Pro irons, you can see the level of craftsmanship that goes into them. Most notably, look at the heel of this club. You can see some very defined sculpting. You've also got milling at the heel of this club. I don't know if I've ever seen that in a golf club before. So it looks good, but what does it actually do on a golf course? Well, let me tell you, the turf interaction with the SMS Pros is the best I've ever felt. It just cuts through the turf like a knife. I've never had a club that got through the rough so easy. It just cuts right through, again, these feel 
so, so incredible. I can't say enough good things about the feel of these clubs. They are long, but they're not super pressed forward. At the 7 iron, they're 32 degrees, which is the newer, modern standard for a player's club, I would say. But they go a long ways, and I love the trajectory of these clubs. I can really dial that in. I played in some windy conditions. I can keep that ball flight low and I can get the ball flight higher when I need to. I can shape all the shots. I'm playing the best golf of my life with the Adele irons. The only drawback to the Adele's is that it's going to be tough for you to actually test these irons. They do have a couple of locations where you can do it. But if you can buy a seven iron off their website, give it a shot and see if it's right for you. This thing is absolutely incredible. I think they're the best players' irons of 2023, bar none. Now for the last two categories, wedges and putters, this can be very personal. So instead of giving you three options, I'm just gonna tell you about my favorites of these two categories. Starting off with wedges, I tried a bunch from Amazon cheap wedges all the way up to very expensive wedges. And in fact, some of the cheapest and some of the most expensive were my favorites. On the cheap side, I'm gonna say Kirkland Signature, the version two that just came out here in the late summer, early fall of 2023. These wedges are as good as my Vokies. They're a huge step up from an already good wedge in the version ones. These version twos are even better. And like I said, just as good as a premium wedge like a Vokie. In fact, I'll be damned if they're not built in the same factory because even the markings on the hosel are the same. These things are great. The only drawback of the Costco Kirkland Signature Wedges version 2s, just like the version 1s, come in a 52, 56, 60 setup, and that's all you've got. There's no customization. You can't change lofts unless you took it to a golf store and you bent them one way or the other. So that's the only drawback. Now, if we get into the high upper end of golf clubs, this is where I found my other favorite set of wedges, and those are the Docus Design Reloaded Plus. Check out the milling on these things. Check out the full face groove. I love a full face groove on a wedge. These things are butter, butter. It's a Japanese boutique brand. You talk about the best type of forged clubs out there, they're gonna be Japanese, and these are as good as they get. Bespoke craftsmanship put into these clubs, they are absolutely incredible. Now the last category here is going to be putters, and I tried, oh, probably at least 100 putters alone this year. I was constantly at the PGA Tour Superstore in their little putting area, stroking putts with everything they had, from even roll to Scotty Cameron to Bettinardi and everything in between. I also changed putters no less than five times this year. It was a year that I really struggled with consistency with the putter, and I had way too many three putts for my liking, and so I was constantly changing. One putter that I really liked late in the year was the Odyssey Versa Jailbird. It was the putter you saw on the PGA Tour. I think that's a fantastic putter. I got really hot with that putter, and then I went really cold with that putter. I ended up ending the year with an older putter of mine, the Cobra Sport 45 that I've had for a few years now. I just can't seem to take that out of the bag for too long. It always finds its way back in. So the Versa would be up there in terms of best putters I tried this year, but for me, the absolute best are the Mizuno M Craft putters. This line of putters offers everything from mallets to more blade style putters, but what they all have in common is incredible balance. If you feel these things, the weight in your hands, the balance just to me at least, feels right. The face, of course, you're gonna have fantastic craftsmanship with those milled faces here. And for me, coming off the putter is just the perfect amount of, it's not too hard and it's not too soft, it's just right. Something about the balance of these things I really like. Mizuno, of course, known for its irons, and that's historically what they've been all about. But they've really rounded out their catalog these days. The drivers are fantastic, the wedges are really good. I've got them in the bag right now, in fact. And these putters, I think, are as good as anything out there. At least should be in the running next time you're at a golf store and they're sitting around, take a couple strokes with an M-Craft putter. I think you're gonna like what you feel. So those are my picks, guys, for 2023. Those are the best of the best. There were so many good clubs, but those are the ones that really shined for me. How about for you? I would love to know down below. Leave me a comment about your favorite clubs and what you found this year, especially if you found something interesting that we haven't taken a look at here at Let's Play Through. I would love to know about it. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit subscribe, and I'll catch you next time on another edition of Let's Play Through.